What's up everybody? My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. If you walk around this hospital, you'll see some people walking around with these mysterious green bags and you might wonder, who are these people? What do they keep in their bags? The answers to these questions are, these are either anesthesia residents, anesthesia attendings, or CRNAs. And what do they keep in their bags? That's what I'm going to answer in this video. If you find this video helpful or interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's dig into the bag. Before I actually open the bag up, I want to point out this one special thing that I use to differentiate my bag from all the other bags, which is a little keychain version of the toy poodle that I have at home, Kobe. Is it just a little bit ridiculous that I spent $10 on that keychain on Amazon? Maybe. But you'd be surprised how many conversations it starts up with patients who are nervous and about to get ready for their procedures and are just looking for anything to talk about that doesn't have to do with the hospital or their surgery. So probably one of the most important pieces of equipment that I keep in here is this piece of airway equipment called a bougie, which I can use to help intubate somebody if I'm having a difficult time seeing their vocal cords and I need to go in blindly. And in another video I'll talk about exactly how this works, but needless to say, this is an extremely important piece of equipment. Next up, I keep a bunch of equipment in here to help monitor patients in certain ways. The first is, of course, a stethoscope, which you know a lot of people carry around on their neck like this, um, but I try not to do this because if I'm in a situation where I'm intubating a patient and I'm leaning over them like this, I don't want my stethoscope to be dangling in their face. And in fact, when I'm intubating, I always put my ID in my pocket like this. So I don't want there to be anything that's going over my patient's face as I'm leaning over them. So anyways, I always make sure that I keep my stethoscope handy and nearby. The next piece of monitoring equipment is called a nerve monitor, which I use to see how many twitches are left when a patient's been paralyzed and I'm getting ready to reverse them at the end of surgery. So it's really important that once a surgery is done, if there's any paralytic that I've given, that I've made sure that all of that is reversed so when the patient's in the recovery room or in the PACU, they don't end up in a situation where there's still some paralytic on board and that causes them to have some respiratory depression, which can of course be disastrous for anybody, especially somebody who's just come out of surgery and is recovering. You can see the nerve monitor has four different functions here and we use it on a couple different parts of the body and again this is something I can talk about in a separate video but needless to say it's a really important piece of equipment for making sure that a patient's not paralyzed after surgery. Just be careful not to accidentally shock yourself on this thing. The last piece of monitoring equipment I always keep with me is a pulse oximeter, which I like to keep with me in case I'm ever in a situation where I don't have my anesthesia machine or I'm not in PACU and I need to know a patient's oxygenation. Most often, I use my pulse oximeter when I'm going from the operating room to the recovery room and I'd like to check my patient's oxygenation while I'm en route. This journey can take anywhere from 30 seconds to maybe a couple minutes, depending on how far the operating room is from the PACU, and it's such a critical time that I always just want to make sure that I'm keeping a close eye on how my patient's doing. Of course, pulse oximetry can also be useful if I've just climbed up several slides. Of course, pulse oximetry can also be useful if I've just climbed up several flights of stairs and I'm feeling out of breath and I want to know truly how out of shape I really am. Not bad. Let's go ahead and keep that clean for actual patients. I also like to keep an IV kit on me at all times, just in case the need pops up. So this IV kit is a little bundle that I made that includes the following items. Of course, I've got a tourniquet, which keeps this all together. I've got a couple of 20 gauge needles, alcohol pads for skin prep, tegaderm and tape to secure everything once I've got my IV in place, and some four x four guys just to keep everything clean. I also keep a saline flush on me just to make sure my IV works. These next items aren't really for patients, they're more for me. And the first of that is food. So just in case I've gone a long time without having anything to eat and I wanna have a quick snack outside the operating room, I always keep with me a protein shake. You know, without actually looking too closely at the protein shake details, this bottle actually kind of looks like the tube feeds that we use in the hospital. And so some people see me around drinking this and they're like, why is this desperate anesthesia resident drinking tube feeds? Don't they feed him anything? But rest assured, it's an actual protein shake and it's really delicious. I also like to keep a little bar on me at all times too. In the front pocket here, I always keep a phone charger on me. Never know when you're gonna run out of batteries and need more. 
And I love to start my day listening to music while I'm setting up my operating room, so I always keep a pair of wireless headphones with me. And the last thing I'll show you here is this little baggie of special medications that I keep just in case I find myself in a pinch and need something that can be a little hard to find sometimes. So that little baggie includes Sugamidex, which is a neuromuscular blockade reversing agent, Haloperidol, or Haldol, which is an antipsychotic, Vasopressin, which is a vasopressor, and Hydralazine, which is an antihypertensive. And then these medications aren't exactly hard to find, but I always just like to keep them handy. So that's atropine, phenylephrine, ephedrine, and labetalol. And then the last few things I keep in here, just miscellaneous. One is this thyroid shield, which helps protect me from thyroid cancer when x-ray or fluoroscopy is being done. It also doubles as a nice necklace anytime I'm looking for extra style points. And then I also keep this fanny pack in here. I don't use it, but you never know when the need for a fanny pack is going to arise, so I always just have it here, just in case. Well, that wraps up this video of what I carry in my backpack, and if you want to see more information about how I set up my operating room, check out the video that I made on that. And if you're also interested in seeing what I keep in my medication card in the operating room, check out the video I made on that. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.